So, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. If you're a drinker like me, allow me to change your life right here, right now. Get a crock pot. I am dead serious. Crock pots are amazing, okay? I'm 45 years old. When my parents kicked out of their house two years ago, I thought, this is the last time I'll ever have pot roast in my entire life, because I don't know how it's made. I just thought my parents loved me so much that they slaved in a hot kitchen for hours making this delicious meal. But then I went on YouTube and looked up how to make a pot roast. I learned my parents are lazy sons of bitches. Because what they would do is they would put everything into a pot, put it in the oven, and then go watch TV for four days. So I applied that same logic to drinking. Now I got a crock pot, and before I go out and get drunk, if I just take five minutes out of my day, think about drunk you, he's gonna be hungry. What you do is you take the crock pot out, put it on the counter, big drinker, plug it in, okay? I can't stress how crucial that little step is in this whole process, okay? You don't know sadness. You, you think a pandemic's sad? Try coming home at 3.30 in the morning to a jar of raw meat. There's not a Toby Key song on Spotify that expresses that kind of heartache. So plug it in. Then take a rose from the fridge, put that in there with some veggies, pour some red wine in there, save the rest of the drive, turn that bad boy on low, then go out and get fake. And you come home at like two, three, 10 in the morning. Oh my God. It feels like someone cares about you. It really does. Because these sons of bitches at Waterbird clearly don't. Two hours for a hamburger? What the hell is going on in this fast food establishment? If you're gonna take that long to make my food, Waterburger, you should just buy old car washes. So that way when my drunk ass pulls in, I can park in the rails, put it in neutral, and pass out. You just pull me forward. Whatever you wanna make my food, let's work together. And if you work at a drive-thru, I want professional courtesy. If you can't make my food by the time I get to your window, tell me the order thing, and I'll order something you can make. In fact, we can cut 30 seconds right now on your little Anthony Bourdain speech of what you got going on now. I don't need to vote. I don't want you trying to make anything, sir. I don't need you to try to make an adventure. I'm, you're Wendy's. I don't need you to experiment with food. I'm not Anthony Bourdain. I'm not coming here to get food poisoning. Play the hits. Play the same sad damn burger I've gotten for the last 15 years. Let's roll. And, like seriously, like if, I, I can't stand it. Like at a drive-thru, like when you order food, and tell me, I'm back there, don't make me come to your second window and lean your lazy ass out and be like, um, sir, we don't have that quite ready yet. Can you pull, no, I'm not pulling around. I'm not your dad waiting to get off work. This ain't Adway's, this ain't curbside service. I'm not that drunk yet. In fact, God forbid you order chicken fingers, the one thing that should never not be ready at a fast food restaurant. I can microwave these sons of bitches in three minutes at home. Don't give me this excuse. Sir, we're gonna make those tenders fresh for you. Bitch, there's never been a fresh tender in the history of chicken, okay? It is a piece of chicken that doesn't exist. You're lucky you can see me with the three lanes of traffic going on back here with these drive throughs and no goddamn instructions on how this shit works. <laughs> lane one, every single time. Fool me once, Bank of America, with your green light on lane two. I will never go there again. I will go from lane one. And trust and believe, you try to get around me by going through lane two, I will ram the shit out of your car. Because I am not waiting for, I am not letting you get my food. We'll go in side by side. I will figure it, we'll figure it out together. I'll hand it through my car to you, right? Because in 15 minutes, I'm not gonna know who the hell you are. Like, I will freak out, because that's a sobriety test right there. And you know you're too drunk to drive when you weave through the drive through lane, because we've all done it. Because you go to get your food, and it turns out it's like 15 feet further than you thought it was, and now you gotta duke the hazard your way out of your car. Make sure you put it in park before you do that, otherwise you look like a sad parade float just cruising out of water burning. <laughs> if the police were serious about cracking down on drinking and driving, they'd be outside of a water burger every morning, 2.30. If 
One cop stayed outside of Waterbury at 2.30 in the morning. DUI arrested about 3,000% in the state of Texas. And it works out for you too, because you don't have to do a field sobriety test. They can just look at your receipt. That's a guilty plea right there. Sir, have you been drinking? Biscuits and queso, step out of the car, sir. I'm an only child, people think that's a great life. It's not, people are like, oh, you were spoiled. You got everything. No, I got tortured. Yeah, maybe my parents did buy me every single board game known to man. Guess what? Not one friend to play them with. All I could play was Legos and Lincoln Logs. I could build anything except social skills. <laughs> then they would come back with people with siblings like, yeah, but you didn't have to share your food. I had to share snacks with my younger sister all the time. Oh, shut up. Yeah, I got fat. That's great. You know what I would love to have shared as a kid? Blame. I would love to share some blame. Because when I set fire to my mom's kitchen and tried to blame my grandma, I got beat like I was two children. I got beat like I, had, I was a sibling. And my mom would give me this bullshit. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Well, bitch, we don't have to do it. Like, you know how psychotic you sound that you're willing to hurt yourself more just to hurt me a little? Like you're willing, I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to risk it just to beat the shit out of you. I grew up with a dad that's been gay for well over 50 years, except for this one time. And growing up, no one wanted to tell me that my dad was gay. I don't know why. Maybe I had to use it in the schoolyard a bit. My dad could beat up your dad. Well, you don't want to know what my dad would do to your dad, Steve. <laughs> what they told me was that they're not gay, they're roommates. Oh, thank God I found that he was gay before I got a roommate. Because their roommate situation, from what I could tell, was they could afford only one bed. That's all they could afford in their whole life. They worked in a bank in real estate. You know how hard I worked in school thinking I'm gonna be sure to bail with another man in my adult life and I don't get my shit together? Eventually I found out he was gay, thank God. Because that would have been awkward if I didn't. Just do brings a bed over, ooh, you brought the bed, slide over. You know, just like. My friends would ask me, like, what do you have against gay people? Like, because I'd be homophobic when I found out my dad was gay. And they're like, what do you have against them? Uh, they grounded me. How about that, chief? <laughs> Come home with a bad report about that. It's like, young man, is this something? Yeah, you could get a room. <laughs> and redecorate it. <laughs>